Hello and welcome back to the Dragonfly Daily. As always, I am your host, Mike, the product manager of Dragonfly. You can follow me at Dragonfly Wizard on Twitter. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn or ResearchGate. Please find us on YouTube. You can watch this video archived with the rest of the Dragonfly Daily series and other fresh content on how to use Dragonfly and how to tackle problems and challenges in scientific imaging. Today's lesson is taking screenshots. If you're watching today on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button right now so you're able to get this and other content in the future. Today's lesson, taking screenshots, will be performed with Dragonfly 4.1. It's a slightly customized Dragonfly 4.1 experience. Make sure and capture and watch lesson six, customizing Dragonfly, so you can have the same Dragonfly experience that you'll see in this training video. Now, in this video, we will be talking about tra taking screenshots with Dragonfly. We're gonna look at three different modes of of taking screenshots. The first is to copy your view, your 2D view or your 3D view directly to the clipboard. And this will take a capture with the exact on-screen resolution. So if your window happens to be 300 pixels wide, then that's how big your screenshot will be. Then we'll look at a, at a pattern for taking multiple screenshots. This will let the user pre-select a resolution, capture a number of screenshots, and then output them all to one folder with a series file name. You'll see more on that in a moment. The final way is how to take a single screenshot, but to take a screenshot at an arbitrary resolution, and then save that export as a single file name at that specific resolution. Let's turn on over to Dragonfly. The data set we have loaded for this lesson is the uh, retina internal, se internal <laughs> I should say, uh, rod internal segment cells. So these are mouse retina rod internal segments. These data come from Christopher Black at the NIH, and these are imaged by FibSim on a Zeiss crossbeam. It doesn't matter what data we actually look at for today. We're just going to show you how you can capture screenshots. Now, the first mode of capturing a screenshot, you can choose any of the views, a 2D view or a 3D view, and you can click this button right here. You see it's a camera button, and if you mouse over or hover your mouse, you'll get a tooltip telling you what it does. Click that button once, and that view is now captured to the clipboard. If you're working, you can have another document open, a PowerPoint document or a Word document, where you can just Alt-Tab over to that document and then paste your new screenshot, then maybe type in a few comments. That's one pattern of making productive screenshots and measuring and uh, keeping up with your progress and showing results. Now, if I do this screenshot with this in a quadrant view, I'll get a different size screenshot than if I double click and then click now. So again, this is based on the number of pixels that your, your current view is taking up on the screen. So that's the first mode, simply clicking the camera to get a screenshot. The second mode of capturing screenshots involves this extension or this plugin right here called multiple screenshots. You can undock this at any time just by dragging it off. It doesn't have to be dragged off. I just want to remove it from the side panel so we can draw our attention to it. What you can do here is you can again use the camera icon, but if I select a view, the camera icon appears. I can now drag it and drop it right here. Now I have that view in this bin. I can grab one from the 3D view and drag it down here. Now suppose I want to change my view. Suppose I want to, for example, I want to invert my data. I may go and uh, apply an inversion. So I'll invert the intensities of my image, create a, uh, overwrite the data set. And now we have this data set. And so we may want screenshots of what we see here. And so again, we can just grab this, drag it to the middle. And I may say, oh gosh, look, there's a row of white pixels on the outside. So maybe I want to clip. And so I may turn on the clip box for my data set, clip in from uh, on all three directions like so, and make this modification. Now I have a slightly better 3D rendering. And so I can turn up my 3D rendering, turn off the clip box, and I can once again grab this and drag it in. Now, each time I capture a screenshot, it will be captured at this resolution or this horizontal pixel width for 3D and this for 2D screenshots. If I take this and I use the mouse wheel, I can scroll through and see all of the different screenshots. So I like the last one I made, but maybe I, for example, I have four. Maybe I like the last one, but I don't like the one before it. I could right click and remove that image. So I have all of these screenshots in this bin for easy use. And at any point I can click export. At this point, you're able to choose a folder and then specify a file name and then output all of those snapshots. So if I export now, it will export three different screenshots. So it could be called my screenshots.1.png, my screenshots.2.png, etc. That enables you to capture all of your screenshots in one bin and then export them quite easily. The third and final mode of exporting screenshots comes from the scene view properties panel. So if you undock this, we can see at the very bottom, there is an export screenshot button. So we can choose any one of our views and click the export screenshot. 
This will then export a screenshot of what's in that view at an arbitrary resolution. So I could say I want 2048 pixels wide, for example, and now it would, I could click OK. Then it will prompt me for a file name and a folder, and then we'll export that screenshot with that file name. So this gives us the convenience of doing very large screenshots. So if you want something that's a few thousand pixels wide, that can give you a high dots per inch, which is useful when exporting for poster reproduction, where you want something that won't look pixelated when printed on a poster for visual presentation. So just a quick recap, that's three different ways of capturing screenshots. You can use the copy to clipboard mode by clicking on the camera. You can drag the clipboard to the multiple screenshots panel where you can accumulate all of the screenshots you want and then export them at once. Or you can do export screenshot to export one at a time at arbitrary resolution. That's all you need to know about creating screenshots in Dragonfly. And that's all we're gonna look at in this short lesson of the Dragonfly Daily. Okay. All right, let's go over to the questions and answers. And uh, note when selecting, there's also a small camera and trash bin shown in the upper right-hand corner of that window. When selecting, there is a small camera and trash bin. Uh, yeah, I don't understand what you're asking, but uh, let me draw your attention to something that could be a source of confusion. Um, I'm going to go to the Python console and uh, mention something. There, there are two icons in the upper right-hand corner. One is a camera, and the other is a little square placeholder. It says drag view to Python console. This view, drag this icon to the Python console in order to obtain a reference to the underlying view. So in Dragonfly, um, we may have seen once that I could say my image equals, and then I could drag a reference to my image, and then I would have uh, a reference to that. There, you might want to refer to a particular view in Dragonfly, and that's all this icon here is for, is if you want to say my view, you could drag this. So this actually has nothing to do with screenshots, but since it's right next to the screenshot icon, I wanted to uh, label it for you. All right, next question. Can you go through the second screenshot option again? The sound wasn't working for that portion. Yeah, sure. Uh, unfortunately, I closed it on mine, so I think I can reopen it by going to plugins, multiple screenshots. All right. So normally appears over here on the left, left tab, multiple screenshots. What you can do here is you can type in the resolution you want for your 2D screenshots, and it can be different from your 3D screenshots. Maybe I want my 3D screenshots to be 1,024 pixels. Now, all I have to do is find the camera icon, and then I can drag it in, and I have a screenshot for uh, for that view. I can come over here to a 2D screenshot and drag it in. This is all looking kind of compressed, so let's close the uh, Python console. Now I can come over here and grab any of these other 2D screenshots, and what I have here is I have a collection of screenshots. If I had a mouse plugged in right now, I could use the scroll wheel to scroll through the different screenshots. So you're able to drag and drop screenshots. It doesn't matter if the view is enlarged like uh, or reduced because it's in a quadrant view, it's only going to capture it at the specific resolution that you have typed in uh, and showing when you do the drag and drop. At any point, you could export all of the images in the bin, or you could clear all of the images of the bin by remove all images. You can also scroll through, and let's say you've captured 23 screenshots, but two or three are things you don't need anymore. You could right-click on an individual screenshot and remove it from the set. So, then when you are ready to export, you click export and you can type, you can navigate to a folder and call it my screenshots. And then when you hit export, you'll have my screenshot.1.png, my screenshot.2.png, et cetera. So hopefully that answers the question for those of you that couldn't hear the sound the first time through. Next question, I sometimes get an image with just stripes. If I don't change the resolution before taking a screenshot, is that a bug that's happened to you before? please send a note to support at theobjects.com describing the behavior you're seeing. Uh, if it's something we can identify and we can, well, if it's something we can reproduce, then we can identify it and fix it. So the team is very good at, ident at identifying bugs, reproducible bugs and fixing them. Um, when selected the different windows, yes, not a trash can. Okay, thanks for that comment, Lars. Next question, changing the resolution has any impact on the scale? Well, um, screenshots, don't have scale. Um, they are, an image could be 500 pixels wide, but they're just pixels and they should not be interpreted as having 
um, angstroms per pixel or microns per pixel scale. It's not for scientific imaging, it is for making figures. So don't think of the scale being relevant. You could have a scale bar showing, but the scale bar will show you the correct information regardless of whether you output a 512 pixel screenshot or a 5012 pixel screenshot. So no, it won't have any um, impact on the scale as it is represented in the image. Next question, looks like scale bar checkbox for the 3D windowing can't be checked. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct. You cannot have a 3D uh, scale bar under normal means. So if you are looking at this image, this is extraordinarily difficult now that I don't have a mouse plugged into this backup computer. When you have a 3D view, if I asked you what is the width of this 3D image and you put up a scale bar, you would see that in the foreground it looks wide and in the background it looks narrow. If I put one scale bar on the screen, it would give you two different answers when in fact the width of this box is the same in the foreground as it is in the background. So I think that was covered in an earlier lesson. So you cannot turn on show scale bar in the 3D view unless you happen to be in orthographic projection. So now I have this projection, which is uh, quite disorienting for myself, but uh, you can rotate. And now in this perspective, the foreground has exactly the same width as the background and we have a scale bar showing. So you can have a scale bar only if you are in perspective view or you can do what I like to do. And that is turn on the clip box for the 3D object so let's turn off orthographic projection so I can show you what I mean. If I were to scroll down on the selected image channel and I turn on the clip box, then the clip box gives you a, let's say, scale rhombus. So if we, let's see, the data set, let's see if we can turn on the scale bar, the grid lines. Well, it's just a little bit hard to see because my data is so opaque. And yeah, if you had a data set where you could see the edges of the scale bar or the edges of the box, then you'll see each one of these boxes now represents uh, 0.6 microns, but you could change that. You could make a two micron scale rhombus if you want. And now each one represents two microns. So while you cannot have a scale bar in perspective view, you can have the scale rhombus and you just have to know that the scale rhombus in the foreground is larger than the scale rhombus in the background, but they both in this case represent two microns. All right, next question. What is the best choice of screenshot resolution? Well, that really depends on the sort of figure you're trying to generate and what your needs are. Um, what we hope to do in a future release is make this a little bit easier. So if you know the manuscript you're targeting and you know the dots per inch for the on-screen, for the manuscript production, um, but that'll be for a, a future release where we, we optimize that for you. But for now, uh, you can just, if you need high quality screenshots, you can just choose high resolution. So that is Instead of 512, you could choose 2048. So there's no optimal answer there. Next question is, could you explain how to export multiple views simultaneously and select them? No, you cannot select them. So uh, the, well, I should say that you can only do a single view at a time in a screenshot. There's not a screenshot that captures two or three panels at the same time. Um, you could of course use your operating system like your Windows snipping tool if you wanted to capture a screenshot with uh, more things on screen than just a single quadrant view. Okay, uh, let's see if we have any more questions. Is there a maximum resolution you can export? I'm not sure what I'm going to use the image for resolution. Um, if I'm not sure what I'm going to use the image for, what resolution should I export to? The maximum? Well, there's, mm, I do not know if there's a maximum. There used to be a maximum on graphics cards at 8,000 pixels. I don't think that limit exists anymore. It does slow things down when you try and export super large screenshots, but no, there's no need to have an 8,000 pixel uh, a screenshot. I would, if you don't know what you're going to use them for, mm, maybe it's premature to be taking screenshots at that. Next question. Would you have a demo on how to segment the C. elegans data sometime in the future? Wow, that'd be great. Um, I would need someone to tell me, I would need a C. elegans uh, consultant to tell me what the different uh, teeth and eggs and organelles are. I mean, not organelles, but organs. So I would be hopeless at segmenting the C. elegans data. Uh, if you want to sit and open a session together, we could uh, look at the different, uh, different materials and figure out how to label it. That'd be awesome. Uh, all right. When exporting 3D animations, Dragonfly crashes. Can you resolve this? Uh, maybe your graphics card is not suitable. 
Um, we do export 3D animations all the time and Dragonfly doesn't crash all the time. So you, I cannot advise you without knowing more details of your case. We can look at your log files and find out what happened. So you could open a case at support at the .com so we could figure out what's going on uh, with your case. If it's a graphics card issue or if maybe Dragonfly is misbehaving and it's a bug that needs to be fixed. Um, but you can just email support at the .com and uh, get a case going for that. So I, I don't know sp uh, specifically what's going on with your issue without diving into more details. All right, as always, thank you everyone for your attention today. Thank you for participating in today's webinar. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Take care.